Let me know ahead of time, second, second in. I'm Doug. And I'm Anna. We bought a wooden teardrop camper kit off the internet. We have zero experience, but it came with a manual that has a lot of pictures. It showed up in three boxes that look like this. And we hope to make it look like this, this, and this. Please follow along as we figure this out. And make a lot of mistakes. Uh, so what we are doing today is I've got a bunch of plastic laid out on these plywood sheets. We have a couple of the panels that we pulled out of the packaging and they have these puzzle joints on them. So I just took some 220 sandpaper just to clean up those edges. Um, they really kind of pop together uh, smoothly, maybe a little bit of a rubber mallet on them. And what I'm going to do is mix up some epoxy. Well, actually, first I need to probably cut to length our, uh, I think that's three inch fiberglass tape ready to go on each one of the joints. Mix up some epoxy, really just kind of lay the fiberglass on the joints, wet it with the epoxy. My plan is, just because I don't want to have to lay something heavy on each one of these, is start over there, throw the fiberglass on there, wet it down, put the next one over there on top of it, separating it with plastic sheetings, and then we'll just stack all four of these on top of each other. And I'll just throw a board and a weight on top of that for it to cure for 24 hours. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Do you have any questions, hon? Nope, but I wasn't listening, so I might have some. <laughs> <laughs> if you thought this was for the camera, you're wrong. This was, this was for you. Oh. Uh, because Oops. all you do is read the warnings <laughs> and I read the instructions. So yes. anything, so. All right, honestly, we're gonna do a little bit of cutting a tape okay. and then mix up epoxy and we'll be ready to go. Okay. So we will probably set, set us up for a time lapse. Okay. Do this. All right, and we have joint number four. With a whoop whoop. The 90s say hello. No, I'm not. I'm recording you. <laughs> <laughs> I did that one. Psych. Uh, now, what I think we're gonna do is unpackage the mold, so that takes 30 to 45 minutes of peeling <laughs> tape off because <laughs> they do a great job yeah. here. We're gonna uh, wrap it. And then I think this is where we're gonna put the mold as far as space goes. Maybe we'll end up moving those tables once they're sanded. Just because I would like to get sanding as close to the garage door as mm -hmm. possible Keep the mess. for a quick blowout mm -hmm. um, rather than it getting everywhere else. <laughs> so that's where maybe the mold will end up a little further that way. But we can move it after we're done. I think it's pretty simple uh, instructions. Uh, start pulling it together, a little bit of wood glue on some joints, screwing some of them together. Um, should be pretty self explanatory.
So Doug just finished putting in the screws to make Just a second. That's the first time you've ever called me Doug. Made it's me uncomfortable. Weird, yeah. Husband face. <laughs> yes. Husband face or Captain Handsome. Um, just finished screwing in all of the nails to make our mold more steady and sturdy and ready to hold the uh, camper shell. And we read in the directions, I read the what not to do sections of the book, Doug read the actual instructions, and one of the sections mentioned that you could accidentally glue your camper shell to your mold um, if it's not covered with masking tape. So that's what I'm gonna do now is cover any part of the shell mold uh, that would be touching with tape so that we don't accidentally glue the camper shell to the mold. Yeah? Do it. Do it. How tape oh, works. Got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Just check in if you are. You know how to oh, tape. I'll do it again for you. <laughs> yeah. And then a the bolt pull there. <laughs> I'm trying to do it one. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Rusty. I'm excited to be here with you today. I am running the all on these patterns, and I guess what this does is leave a dotted line. So when we pull this pattern off, we connect these dotted lines and then have your cut lines to make. I think these are the sides of the cargo carrier, uh, is what these will end up being. Um, you might hear some similarities between Doug and I's voice, but you can see one of us got the looks. <laughs> oh, those are the inside, yeah. Yeah. So this is just where you start. Dot the dot it. And it's pretty easy when you get on the long rounds to Oh, there's a notch there already. Yeah, you're, you're familiar with this. That's so those. tricky, yeah. Yeah. I should have not shown you. Okay. That's what you're doing. You made me panic a little bit when it was off that far. I was like, what? Ah, man. Surprise, you suck at dots. Yeah, that's weird. Who sucks at dots? So what I'm doing now, just have the router out, routing in some of the gaps on the integrated cargo carrier. So this is just a one fourth inch uh, bit that I have on the plunge router. So that that way, uh, when the side pieces come in, you have a little bit of a mechanical bond here or a slot that they're able to slide into. Um, that's it. Obviously using this uh, straight edge. Um, just to keep my line going all the way down. It's kind of, it's straight-ish. <laughs> so I think it'll work. All right, that's it. We have made a lot of progress today, so I thought I'd walk you through a little bit of what we've done while the guys are on their way to Menards to, I, I don't know if they're dropping off plywood or picking up plywood, to be honest, something. So I thought I'd walk you through what everyone has done so far today. So Uncle Rusty and Grandpa Funky worked on the um, put, punching the holes and doing adult dot to dot and tracing the different parts and pieces that we will need to cut out for the ICC, which is the integrated cargo carrier. So they were a big help doing a lot of that busy work on the side um, for us so that we can keep going on the main part of the project. We, uh, yesterday, 
fiberglass. This is the back side, so in between here there's fiberglass um, on the undersides. And this morning we sanded those fiberglass and epoxy sides down from the foyer that we did yesterday. So this is what one of the joints looks like once it is uh, epoxied, fiberglassed, and then sanded with an orbital sander. And now the next step we're going to be working on is um, joining these two pieces here, which are the number one pieces. Once they are joined, they then will go into our mold over here and they will lay down in this arch and they become the ceiling to the teardrop camper. This square, the rectangle, somewhat rectangle shape right here actually becomes the hatch in the roof of the camper, if that helps put that piece together. This part I'm actually uh, really looking forward to. So far, the orbital sander and the epoxy fiberglass is my favorite, but I think this is gonna be second favorite, or maybe top. Um, you're taking these pieces of metal, pushing them through these holes that are already in the wood for us, punching it through one piece and then this under piece also has a hole and it'll come out here twist them together and then that joins the two number one pieces together that will make the roof of the camper so i'm going to go ahead and get that started so time lapse Before I do a time lapse, I will show you what one of them looks like. We'll see if this is gonna be easy, hard, time consuming, or pretty quick. Push it through the first one, that's easy. Push it through the second board, also easy. Okay, this is gonna go quick. So you can see here, I've got it through. And all I'm going to do is twist like a bread baggie. So, time lapse. All right, so I think I'm done until uh, the guys come back from the hardware store. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, go see what the kids are doing, maybe make them some lunch if they're hungry, and I'll be back when the work begins again. Thanks everybody.